Kalyan. A very warm good afternoon to each and every one present here. I will be delivering a very small talk on Wendelin Booth's poem, A Sunset of the City. This new paper, Women's Writing, is a recent edition, and I myself treat uh, myself as a student and I am learning women's writing. I am going through the various critical theories and discourses. So it will be an attempt, just like all of you, to understand this poem better. I hope that I will be able to reach to each one of you. And pardon me if I make any mistakes, because I myself treat this journey as a journey of a student. Now before I begin, I would like to talk something about who is Wendelin Brooks. Visual things leave an impact. This is what I firmly believe in. A picture leads to so many things. Whenever you are reading and writing and you are getting to know about any writer, it is my request that please check on a picture of this person. Wendelin Brooks was born in the year 1917 and she died in 2000. The one mark questions that even Rachna Ma'am talked about, we generally focus on all these things. She was an American poet, author and teacher. Her work often dealt with personal celebrations and struggles of ordinary people in her community. She was the first African American to receive Pulitzer Prize in the year 1950. Her life and work asserted the humanity of black people in America. She understood the privilege of being ordinary long before it acquired the urgency it has today. And there is an amazing experience of being ordinary. You get the feeling of being extraordinary by being ordinary. The ordinary gives a sense of comfort. It is not to be feared or questioned. It does not draw suspicion. The ordinary person can walk to the corner store, drive freely, and live without apprehension. This is such a great privilege not given to the celebrities. For her, the survival of black people in America depended on a lifelong insistence that they too were ordinary. Now before I talk about this poem, First of all, we'll go through the text of the poem. And for all those who have ever attempted practical criticism, it is my request and desire that while we are going through this poem, you can jot down your impressions that you draw from the poem. <coughs> Professor Bina Singh, she talked about this poem in one of her lectures. And ma'am has covered most important aspects of the poem. But since I already attempted this poem, I thought that we will have a discussion of what you and I are gaining an understanding from this poem. So let us read this poem. Already I am no longer looked at with lechery or love. My daughters and sons have put me away with marbles and dolls, are gone from the house. My husband and lovers are pleasant or somewhat polite, and night is night. It is a real chill out, the genuine thing. I am not deceived. I do not think it is still summer, because sun stays, and birds continue to sing. It is summer gone that I see. It is summer gone. The sweet flowers in drying and dying down. The grasses forgetting their blaze and consenting to brown. It is a real chill out. The fall crisp comes. 
I am aware there is winter to heed. There is no warm house that is fitted with my need. I am cold in this cold house, this house whose washed echoes are tremulous down lost walls. I am a woman and dusty standing among new affairs. I am a woman who hurries through her prayers. I am a woman who hurries through her prayers. Ten intimations of a quiet court to be my desert and my dear relief. Come, there shall be such I landing from grief and small communion with the master shore. Twangly, and I incline this year to tin. Consult a dual dilemma whether to try in humming pallor or to leap and die. Somebody muffed it. Somebody wanted to joke. So this is the poem written by Wendelin Brooks. And as I told you, being a student of practical criticism, however we are provided with who is the writer and in what age she was writing. Still, the poem has a lot that can be deciphered and every time when we read and reread the poem, something new comes up. Now before we delve deep into the understanding and analysis of this poem, let us look at this poem coming from a woman's perspective. Being woman, if you write the word woman, man is already existing there. In the different talks that you already have attended, you have noticed that there is a masculine present in the female and there is a feminine present in the male. It is only that the balance of the two can create history or her story. If we look at the various aspects of the women movement, how the women have been given and provided with various opportunities and at the same time they have been tested. Now this woman who is writing from a double marginalized perspective, she is a woman and she is black. Standing here, we actually cannot understand the plight she must have undergone before writing this poem. I personally feel that there comes a moment in your life that James Joyce in Portrait of the Artist as a young man calls epiphany. That is the moment of self-realization. That is the moment of ultimate revelation. That is the moment when you get to know you are on a path of exploration and quest. This life is a test and this test is given to you on an everyday basis. Look at this woman that Gwendolyn Brooks is talking about. When I read this line twice, that how hurriedly she is going through her prayers, we all can have a, a picture of our mothers. Just because we need to come to the college, just because someone has to go to the office, we are seeing our mothers in hurry, doing everything that is to be done, leaving the worship and even if they are performing, it is in some or the other kind of hurriedness. So we can see a similarity between this African American as well as in Indian context. Another thing that I would like to share with each one of you is that whenever you are reading a poem, Try understanding the poem or the text by keeping it in the contemporary times. We are in a fast paced world. Things are changing at a very fast and rapid rate. Every day there is a new app, there is a new website, there is something or the other new. Keeping a pace is very very important. Now when we are reading a poem that was written in 20th century, Standing here in 21st century, the first question that should be in our mind is why we are reading this poem? What is that point that is capturing our attention here? Now look at how I have tried analyzing this poem. Sunset of the City by Wendelin Brooks is a symbolic poem. 
that characterizes a woman who is in the sunset of her life. There are various phases of a woman or a man's life. Go back down to your memory lane and check out how you have evolved. Go back to your school days, your initial years in college and now those who are almost at the fag end of their college life. You will find out that you are evolving every day. This woman who is in the sunset of her life is looking back at her life and is checking out on all the aspects she has witnessed from the time when she was the apple of everyone's eye to the time when she is left away with marbles and dolls. The poem is reflective of the woman's life as well as heavy with the realization that she is in the final stage of her life. We never know when we'll be called back. So every second is the last second of your life. How you live your life in this second is going to determine who you want to be and why you are here. Now this woman is reflecting on every aspect of her life. She is checking out on each and everything. She is traversing the entire history of her life. And if you pay a close attention to the poem, you will find that all these aspects are beautifully taken up by this craftsman, Gwendolyn Brooks. The title of the poem is again symbolic. Sunset implies the end of the day. But all of you know that every end has a new beginning. This woman who is being taken up as a character by Wendelin Brooks, no doubt, is in the sunset of her life. But still, this sunset reveals a number of things that we need to think about. Whenever we are, we as human beings are 24-7 in connect with human beings. Your kindness, your compassion, your generosity and your mindfulness is a very important aspect. How much you are present in this moment because this moment is your life as Rumi has said. Mind is the game player. He keeps your body here but tries traveling everywhere. The moment you start exercising your willpower to have a hold of things, you will start realizing and recognizing things. Now this woman, when she is talking about the sunset, as far as I have understood the poem, I think that this sunset is not symbolizing the end of her life only. Rather, it is a new beginning for each of the readers who are reading this poem so that we can develop an attitude of looking at life. Because today or tomorrow, we will also be near the sunset. And we don't know when is that sunset destined. The end of the day symbolizes rest after a long day of work. In the morning when the alarm clock rings, we start our day. And throughout the day, there is a desire to get back to home. Where is your home? Home is where the heart is. So wherever is your heart, there is your home. We all want to go back to home. We want to relax. So is the soul, which is on a journey, a human journey. And it is symbolic that her work on earth is nearing the end. Sometimes we feel that in this big populace of 7.7 .7 billion, why are we existing? And there is a purpose. A very strong and big purpose. The day it will strike you, you will start understanding everything. You will start recognizing the need of the hour. You will start understanding that what is the essential requirement of self-realization. Yesterday I read a very interesting thing wherein it was said, the more we look out, the more we get confused. The moment we start looking within, a change starts happening. Till the time Gautam was looking outward, he was Gautam. And the moment he delved inside, he became Buddha. So you all can be enlightened, just like this woman, who was enlightened and was ready to express herself 
through this writing by talking about a common woman an ordinary woman who is right now existing with us within us but we do not look at her closely now the word city it is symbolic of activity energy spirit with the choice of the word city in the title the poetess creates the image of someone who had a lively and passionate lifetime but this final stage of life is not nearly as active and as robust it was in her prime time now there are phases of life but if you continue to exercise the energy that is constantly existing in you there are innumerable things that you can achieve in this lifetime after all we all are endowed with the same 24 hours and if we are properly utilizing these 24 hours we can bring a change not only in our life but the society or the nation around A sunset of the city is full of visual imagery and rhyming that you can easily check out in the poem and this visual retreat makes us feel that how much the hustle bustle of city life many a time creates such a deafening noise for us that we want to go in solitude the poem produces a depressed and sad tone however because the poetess who is presenting a character is creating this tone so that we can look within and find out what is pain there is a full form of the word pain pay attention in word now pay attention in word now throughout the six stanzas wendelin brooks switches back and forth between the different characteristics the poem is about a mother who has raised her children in the same house for years and years she describes the city atmosphere and how her children outgrew her now most of us face this if you are working in a particular space if you are born there and if you are spending the last days of your life the entire life's trajectory can be seen through your mind side the development that you see on an everyday basis and how years pass everything seems to change after all change is the only constant her kids her husband the place where she lives the seasons but not her now this is again an impression that i would like to point upon sometimes we think that everything around is changing but we are not changing i think that is something to be stopped we should change because if we are not changing we are not evolving and that is why if people meet you and say that you have changed take it as a compliment because you should change that is how nature works and you are nature as in rock star in one of the songs ranbir kapoor has said that mai bhi hu nature okay everything seems to change as i talked of then uh, comes the next slide wendelin brooks's theme in a sunset of the city would be a combination of loneliness and being forgotten now a question that i would like to ask all of you how many of you would like to be forgotten raise your hands <laughs> some fine but general consensus is we all want to be remembered now may i know why you want to be remembered for the change that we can bring okay Because what else should be an essence of art and different people's life okay what else it is human instinct man everyone likes to be remembered okay anything else and those of you who raised your hand that you want to be forgotten why <laughs> Why you want to be forgotten? See, it's very theoretical answer. Theoretical, you can say hmm. we all have a soul. Soul is similar. Oh. I mean, yes, philosophically, <laughs> spiritually. So, in that way, who am I? I'm nobody. And you that's know? why I'm everybody. But yeah. my soul is also Buddha's soul. Buddha's soul was also eternal. He is also remembered today. 
Actually, the whole idea is world is one energy. World is one energy. World is one energy and we keep changing our names. We keep changing our uh, associations. But the energy is constant. Buddha is existing. Not in his form. But in some other forms. In his ideas. In his thoughts. Wendelin Brooks, when she wrote this poem, when she is talking about the plight of this African American woman, what she is pointing off, that there is something that is holding this woman. That is making her reveal her heart to the readers. Because maybe there is some or the other kind of thought that I will be forgotten. I am all lonely. Nobody pays attention to me. The children whom I reared up, they grew and they went away. I am all alone by myself. And whenever I meet even my people from the family, I don't feel that association anymore. That self-realization is very evident in this particular poem. The thing that mostly enforces this is when the poetess writes, My daughters and sons have put me away with marbles and dolls. The tables have turned. The times have changed. And what she actually thought is actually not happening. Because this entire process, no matter how much we say expectations are the cause of all pain, but as humans we expect. That leads to tremendous pain. Because in this world you cannot control anybody except your own self. And once you start having a control on yourself, you will start getting the feeling of acceptance. This woman has actually accepted the things. But now when she is in the sunset of her life, she feels that I will be forgotten. I am all lonely. So there is this sense of depression and pain that Gwendolyn Brooks is trying to put forward before us. We see how this woman is forgotten and is left to herself, not only in that quote, but in the rest of the poem as well. The poetess's use of imagery helps the reader see the theme better. Seeing mental image, of course, this lady being left alone to not be lectured on or loved on, helps us see her being left behind. Fear of missing out, FOMO. This is something that many of us fear because we always, always, living in a society, we always want to be included. Very few of us are not actually fearful of FOMO because fear of missing out sometimes makes us feel that even living in a society, we are not part of the society. And uh, recently, while reading and writing through things, I created a small quote. I am a part of everything. Still I am a part. One where it is a part and one it is a part. Now knowing that I am a part. I am me. I am nobody else. I don't want to be anybody else. And nobody can be me. The things, the experiences, the choices that I have made in my life are creating my life. Which may be fruitful which may actually go in vain. So that choices actually make things. This woman is feeling that she is left behind. She is not a part of that social sphere she desired to be a part of. Also in a non-literal term, feeling the cold house she is left in, we see that she is dust. We all are dust. And she hurries through her prayers, which in a way helps the reader with a mental image of everything going on in this poem and helps put the theme in your mind. We are always in hurry. We need to visit the next moment to know what is there in the next moment. This leads to anxiety. Thinking about past leads to depression and thinking about future leads to anxiety. Only in the present moment is ecstasy, relaxation, bliss. So this woman is hurrying through her prayers. 
because she is having this idea that if i am not able to perform my duties i will be judged we all have again this fear of being judged what will people say about us what will this and that person think about me who are they to judge you never work for any one's approval in your life and you will reach to the zenith of your life's exploration it is not for reaching some top ladder but it's something that you should do for your own self now a small poem which is very similar to this poem and when you are reading the poem of wendelin brooks it is my suggestion that you go through this poem also you will find out some similarities and some differences to a daughter leaving home this is a poem by linda paston when i taught you at 8 to ride a bicycle lopping along beside you as you wobbled away on two round wheels my own mouth rounding in surprise when you pulled a head down the curved path of the park i kept waiting for the thud of your crash as i sprinted to catch up while you grew smaller more breakable with distance pumping pumping for your life screaming with laughter the hair flapping behind you like a handkerchief waving goodbye freedom is the only desire that any human wants freedom from everything the more we are free the more we can explore there should be no questions not from our parents not from our teachers not from our elders but in my opinion that is not the right way a balance of tradition and individual talent is needed there is the need of the art that you understand your customs and tradition but at the same time learn to have your own say with a balance to a daughter leaving home is a poem that describes the memory of a mother teaching her young daughter to ride a bicycle you can never forget the role of your mother and today when you say to your mother tum hamari baat nahi samajh sakti that is something absolutely wrong she is the only one who right now and will understand you forever the contrasts are clear the title suggests that her daughter is now old enough to leave home yet the poem concentrates on the past because human beings are in the habit of always thinking in past which is shown in this poem and what is even presented by wendelin brooks in a sunset of the city is the same thing she is looking back to what she has done for the family and now where she is standing where she is kept she is left with marbles and dolls she is hurrying through her prayers but there is not a single iota of appreciation that is ever told to her and final summing up the tone of sadness continues throughout the poem the pain of being forgotten is portrayed identity crisis and loneliness is taken into consideration and the poem questions innumerable aspects of modern life and where we are headed to so this was a small presentation i have tried <laughs> delivering what